Welcome, my name is Kerry and this is Dog on the Plot. On this channel I release weekly vlogs from my home garden and from my full-sized allotment plot. If you're new to the channel I expect enthusiasm, a pretty gentle vibe and yeah basically um, I invite you to take a little break from the grind and enjoy something for your gardening well-being and hopefully get inspired along the way. This week we're into mid-February and to be honest I don't have to do much. You know, it's it's still winter. Um, there are some things to sort of start getting on with, and one of the things that I want to do is start improving the soil in the raised beds in the home garden. And I've got some little tricks for that, so stay tuned and we'll do that. Um, but the other thing is, of course, things to sow in February. So I have my list. Um, I've been through, through my folders this morning, um, and there's certain things I want to do that I mentioned last week, one of which is loofah seeds. So I attempted loofah last year and failed miserably. So I'm having another go this year. So I want to do loofah. And the other thing I got out last week was melon seed. Um, I also want to sow some more sweet peas and um, lupins as well. And then of course, now is the time that you can start sort of the early peas. And I've been through my pea folder, which is absolutely heaving with different pea varieties. But I think I found the ones that are suitable for sowing now. So I want to do some peas. Um, and the other thing I didn't mention last week and I was going to do and then didn't have time. Um, if you notice that the video stopped very abruptly last week, that was why I didn't get time to do the thing that I was going to put on the end. And that is soak and plant my ranunculus. So that's on the list for this week. And I think those are all the things that I want to start for now. I'm certainly nowhere near thinking about my tomatoes just yet. And of course, we've already got the chilies and the aubergines and the sweet peppers and the onions and leeks. All of those are already going and looking pretty good. But it's just started raining, which is great because I put my washing out. Um, so we'll move indoors, um, not this week to do any sort of cooking or fermenting, but rather because these seeds require some special treatment. Oh, it really started raining, so <laughs> it's a good thing we had a job to come inside to do. So the job is soaking seeds. And of course, you don't have to soak a lot of seeds. It's a kind of optional thing. But um, my recent experience doing the soaking of the chili seeds in the tea, and if you want to look at that, it was episode 69, and I will link it at the end of, of this video. Um, my experience of that was that those chili seeds came up within a week. And the chili seeds that I started last week without soaking have still yet to appear. Now, I'm sure they will. <laughs> You know, it's just about speeding up that germination process. And if you're a garden like me who tends to be a little impatient, <laughs> I, this reminds me of my asparagus growing last year. So I grew asparagus from seed last year and I thought nothing had happened. And I was like, oh, I give up. And I reused the compost to sow cosmos seeds. And then as the cosmos came, was coming up, I kept thinking, well, what's that? What's that? And of course, it was all asparagus. In the end, I had tons and tons of asparagus, but it was all growing in the cells with the cosmos. So I am slightly impatient when it comes to germination, and therefore soaking is something that keeps me motivated. And it's part of that well-being of gardening, you know, um, keeps my spirits up when I see things coming up. Um, yeah, I know, I'm just really impatient, really. Now, some things you can uh, choose whether to soak or not, for instance, sweet peas. Other things it really is recommended to soak, and one of those is loofah. Now, um, it does, so it says on the packet, sow your seeds early before the last frost, soak seeds overnight in warm water and germinate at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, germination wasn't my problem with lupus last year, neither was the gr long growing season can take up to 200 days. <laughs> Um, that was, well, we never even got to that point. It could have been a problem, I wouldn't know, because they got completely eaten by slugs. Similarly, lupins I've had very little success with because of slugs. Um, and this is another one where it actually says on the packet, soak seeds overnight in warm water before sowing. So you treat lupin and loofah very, very similarly, uh, at least to start with. Um, I've only got one packet of um, 
Lupin. It is uh, Russell's Hybrids Mix, and it says an immensely variable color range with two shades of a single color and contrasting bicolors. So it should be a riot of uh, beautiful, beautiful purpley and blue and pinky colors, um, which is very like sweet peas. They just tend to be, there's a traditional sweet pea. That's the Kapani. And um, <laughs> I mean, this is this is what we're talking. These are all my varieties of sweet pea. I mean, that is ridiculous. I've got four, five, four, four packs of um, saved seed of perennial sweet peas. Now, my experience of perennial sweet peas is that they are tricky to germinate. So I would definitely recommend soaking perennial sweet peas. Hardy annual sweet peas, you can take it or leave it. Um, some people would prefer not to bother. For me, I mean, I'm soaking these ones anyway, might as well stick all these in a bowl as well. Um, in terms of varieties, so we've got that Kapani, we've also got an Earl Grey blend, uh, we've got Spanish Dancer, these are the ones, uh, Spanish Dancer, Air Warden and White Frills that are already autumn sown, didn't do particularly well. But they're having another chance now. Um, I've also got a Remembrance Mixed and um, a Singing the Blues. Blue, blue. And um, I think in previous years, I've kept all my varieties separate so I know which colours are coming up. But you know what? <laughs> Every single time, in the end, I just look what I've got, you know, what has come up and has made nice little plants. And then they just go all out together. So I don't think there's any point. You know, that's the extra work to me the labeling and keeping things differentiated. I would rather not bother with that and bother with the soak. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have a riot of colour with the lupin and a riot of colour with the sweet pea. The other thing I've got out, um, let's do these first, because these are flowers, ranunculus. These are my ranunculus from last year. I have never um, lifted and saved ranunculus before. So this is a first. These were all brand new last year. And there they are. And actually, they look fine. You know, some are bigger than others, but uh, certainly they, yeah, look like the ones that I bought last year. And um, the trick with ranunculus is also to soak them. Now, these are all going to be soaked overnight. These only need to be soaked for four hours before you plant them. And um, there's a little trick to the soaking of ranunculus as well. So um, stay tuned for that. So they're also being soaked. And then lastly, we're getting there, is the peas. Again, not one that requires soaking, but if you want to see quicker results, then this is one way to do it. And uh, as I said before, I went through my packets to find the ones that were more for this early sowing. And um, this one was easy because it's called Early Onward. And I did, uh, I, I sowed that last year. We had that on the allotment last year. It was a good little pea. Yes, I like that one. Um, the other one I've got is Meteor which says um, you can sow uh, from January. And I didn't have any luck with Meteor last year. Just didn't come up. Don't believe I soaked it. So maybe soaking will be the key for Meteor. And then I've got my new pea for this year, which is uh, Kelvedon Wonder. And um, this is so from February and is meant to be a heavy cropper. I'm pretty sure that's why I picked it. And then the last one I've got, Bear with me here. Izitas Crombeck Blauschwacker. Apologies for poor pronunciation. Um, but this one said um, it could be an autumn sown pea. So it should be fine now. So I'm going to do that one as well. So I've got four different peas. Now those ones I will differentiate between because I would like to know which of these varieties uh, germinate better, grow better, taste better. So I'm going to try and keep my labeling with those. And that's everything I'm gonna soak. And the other thing that we're gonna plant today is the melon, um, but that you do not soak, okay? I double checked it, <laughs> I Googled it, so definitely do not soak melon seeds. They will come up wonderfully on their own, and if you try to soak them, you're more likely to make them rot um, than make them germinate quicker. So don't do your melon seeds. Right, let's get some uh, water then. So warmish water that's going to stay at room temperature over the course of 
the next 24 hours. In fact, I might put them near the propagator so they just benefit from some of the warmth that's coming from there as well while they're sitting in the water. There's one little other trick that I want to show you as well, but let's get the water ready first. Well, it wasn't my plan, but um, I've soaked a lot of sweet peas. I've only got a few in the Remembrance Mixed and the Singing the Blues. Everything else has been put to soak. So if we do have good germination, um, we're going to have a lot of sweet peas this year, which is not a bad thing. And it might be nice to have some on the pot as well this year. I only had them in the home garden last year. Now, the things that I haven't done yet are the loofah and the perennial sweet peas. And that's because I'm going to give these uh, an even better chance of germination um, through another little trick, which is that loofah seed. <laughs> now, the loofah seed, and with all of these, this is why they're difficult to germinate, is because they have a hard casing. And um, as well as soaking, you can uh, help them by just making a little indent into that casing. So, what you can do is just and I use for um, these these the, the cuticle like snips for your for your nails. Um, I do not do my nails. No point doing them <laughs> if I've not got mud under the fingernails. I, I'm calling it a good nail day. But um, I use these to just snip a little bit of the casing. So um, not at the sort of pointy end you can see, but at the rounded end. Just snip the tiniest little bit off, so you can see. Some of the white, not too much. You don't want to damage the seed, but just so you can see some of the white inside. Okay, like that. I know that's not going to focus properly. Um, and then it can go in the water. So I'm going to do that. Oh, there we go. That was a better one. <laughs> I'm trying not to do it at the camera. You can do that with all of the loofah seeds that I'm going to sow, which I think. I might actually do all of these. Why not, hey? There was a lady on the allotment last year and she grew, uh, saying lupins now, loofahs outdoors. And you know, traditionally you think they like heat and they should be in the greenhouse or a polytunnel, but no, she grew them outdoors really successfully and she thought they did actually better outdoors than they did in the, in the greenhouse. So I'm going to try them on the allotment this year, which I did try last year, but as I say, the slugs, slugs got them. Now there is another way of doing this. Rather than soaking for 24 hours, you can instead um, put these in some wet paper towel and in like a Tupperware tub and leave them for a few days. And then you'll see which ones germinate and which don't. So you don't waste compost then on, um, on seed that's not going to do anything. However, that also requires another level of patience that I don't have. So I'm doing it this way instead. But if you do it the other way and have had good success, let me know in the comments. Okay, that's all my loofah seeds in. And that's it for loofahs. Okay, that's your one chance for this year. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with the perennial sweet peas because perennial sweet peas are notorious, I think, in my experience, for not germinating. 
And you can do the same thing with these, which is just sort of knit the casing. The other way of doing this is um, uh, you can like put a uh, rough on the surface with some sandpaper, um, which I think I have tried before. Anyway, for this little experiment, I'm going with just nipping the casing like I did with the with the loofah seed. Now I'm aware some people will be of the mind that this seems uh, an awful waste of time and effort and that they would much rather just stick it in some soil and wait longer because you're good people who are not aren't as um, impatient as I am. But actually doing things something like this which is a bit like pricking out and I know people there are people who don't like pricking out but I do I like um, these sort of little methodical tasks that are quite almost meditative yeah I like these bits of gardening right that's it everything's in to soak and um, everything is labeled and I've arranged it on the tray so that I'm not moving things around and then they um, get separated from their label however actually I'm going to take the ranunculus off here because that needs slightly different treatment to everything else okay <laughs> now all of these I think what I'm going to do is try to um, <laughs> and this may go terribly wrong try to put the propagator on top of this tray because these don't need any light um, and that will keep everything a bit warm because they'll have the heat from the the propagator um, the ranunculus however they have an additional little trick which is um every hour <laughs> so i said they needed to soak just for four hours which is different these are going to be 24 hours ranunculus only need four hours but every hour it's advantageous to pour the water out and put fresh water in <laughs> this is because ranunculus prefer oxygenated water while they are plumping up um, so water that's got some air running through it. Now, if you're fancy and have like um, a little air pump or something that you would use for a fish tank or something like that, you could pop that into a kind of big tank of water and just let them bubble around for four hours. I do not. So yeah, every hour I'm going to come back, empty the water, put fresh water in, pour it nice and high so it gets lots of oxygen in. I'm not sure how the science works. Um, and then after four hours, they should be nicely plumped up and ready to sew, which will be our next job. So I think I'm going to have some lunch and then I'll join you in the afternoon for some ranunculus sewing. Well, you leave me alone for five minutes and obviously I end up at the garden center totally blame Mark he would text me as like five minutes garden center of course I'm gonna go I did need to go need to go because um, I got some more of those big black buckets um, because although I repotted all the blueberries last week I've still got the honeyberries to do um, and because uh, I've got two of those in one pot so I want to separate those out as well so you know had to go what I didn't have to do was buy a load of reduced plants but when they're reduced how can you resist look at all those for a quid a quid uh, they're gonna this and um this um arenaria that one which has little white flowers they're like rockery plants so they're gonna go in the border around the pond and then i also got this tangiers thing see there which um, has little daisy flowers I thought would be very pretty. This one actually already has a few little flowers on. Oh, although they're white and they're supposed to be red. I hope this is the thing that's on the label. This is called Ben Moore, but it looked like um, little geum flowers. Anyway, a quid, a quid. How can you say no? This one, 50p, don't even know what it is.
no idea. Do you know what that is? Let me know in the comments. Um, this one is an Amiria. Um, it's the morning white star one, which is very pretty. Is that focusing? And um, looks healthy enough. Uh, and that too, I think I, oh, <laughs> lots of roots on the bottom, <laughs> um, will go into the pond border where I have the pinks and whites and uh, all my sort of rockery plants. Um, so they were great, but then this was my big bargain. In fact, this is my second bargain Passiflora. Uh, this one is called Constance Elliot and is a whiter variety. So the one I bought last year and put um, around the arches at the back of the garden or over the raised beds was uh, the more purpley variety. And, and I thought, well, the, the idea is that it will go all the way over, but I thought this one could go the other side and they can meet in the middle and one will be more purpley and one will be whiter. But yeah, 75% off. Couldn't resist. Now, is it a good time to plant one of these? Probably not. I suppose it's um, better in the ground than the pot. I might, I might wait for you to advise me in the comments before I do anything with it. But now it can just uh, stay and get a little water. So that little trip out means um, we're now two hours into the ranunculus soaking. So I've poured the water out and put water in again twice. And um, while that's continuing, I am thinking now, by the time that's ready to plant, it's probably going to be dark. But what I did want to say, the good thing about soaking, as opposed to um, perhaps doing the paper kitchen paper method, um, is that uh, you have to, in 24 hours, you have to pot on. Now I say that, but I did leave those sweet peas that I did for autumn for about three days before I did it. But there is a danger when I think you do the paper towel method that you kind of forget about them and they might dry out or um, they get really long shoots and then it's hard to plant because the shoots will break and things like that. Whereas just soaking for 24 hours, you kind of like, right, this time tomorrow, I'm going to have to pot these on. Um, so, yeah, that's what we will be doing this time tomorrow. Although that is when I was planning to be down the allotment. Anyway. I'm in the greenhouse now because there's a few jobs to do in here. So there's the onions to pot on, um, which we'll talk about in a sec. But there's also a couple of house plants that I have to deal with for a little thing. Um, the first one is this jade. And um, I did the classic thing of sort of moving my plants around and I knocked off a lovely big bit of my jade plant. Now, jade is a, a, like a succulent, and with all those sorts of plants, you can't just shove it in some soil right away. You have to wait for the end to callus, and this has well callused. In fact, it's rather dried out. It may be too far gone. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert in this. However, I want to give it a try. Uh, give it, give you a chance. So I'm going <laughs> to. Don't know what that was about. So I'm going to put um, the jade cutting. Um, <laughs> reluctant cutting into a pot of um, very uh, gritty soil and we're going to give him a go okay so that's one job second job is this transcendentia is this one called moses in a basket i think that's what this one is called um, i've had it for a long time it's got progressively more spindly as it's uh, dried out and the leaves have fallen off um, but there is still life in it. So I'm actually going to take a cutting from this and start a new plant. They're going to give up on this one and start a new one. So that's my other job. And lastly, before we start that, check this out. Now, my ranunculus that I'm soaking now, as I said, I lifted those. Uh, it was July, June or July time after they finished flowering. I lifted them, dried out the corms or claws, whatever you would call them. And, and now I'm just um, bringing them back to life through the soaking to plant on. Um, some I left in the beds just because I couldn't find them, didn't know where they were left. And then they started flowering like October, which was bizarre and wonderful. Um, others I lifted. And um, so you can do your ranunculus, you can soak them and plant them in uh, the autumn, but actually I had more success with the ones that I did in the spring and that's why I've waited till now. But these ones I've overwintered and as you can see, they're doing really well. So 
the nice little happy plants. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I just need to keep them alive now because that one, <laughs> that one's looking less happy. But I won't give up on you. In fact, what I might do is just cut that off and allow the co the corm should be absolutely fine. I'll cut off that and um, allow that to re-sprout now in here. Secateurs. There we go. Second life. Okay, so Transcendentia is supposed to be really easy to propagate. And I do the um, zebra one quite often because the bits of that are always falling off. And indeed, it does, um, it does propagate really well. Um, I haven't done this one. I must have done this one before. I have. Um, there's little shoots coming off here. Uh, tiny ones. I'll put those in too. Um, but yeah, look, that's... I say look it's down there this is just just come straight out so that was pretty much dead <laughs> honestly every time I walk around the garden I find a bulb I guess it's been turfed out by a squirrel I have to go plant it again and hope for the best there we go <laughs> bulb replanted um right so I want some compost and some grit Okay, so the jade is getting um, a like 50 50 mix. Let's find a nice size pot. There we go. Not too big. Very gritty. And basically, just going to push, push it in. There we go. We'll see what it does. Okay. Um, I've made the mistake before, I feel, of when I'm doing succulents and potting them up, um, of watering them too heavily just to kind of, you know, you have the idea of you settling the roots. I'm not going to water that at all because the compost is quite damp. Making a judgment call on that. Right, this. We don't want any of those dead bits. Where did those two little bits go? There's one. Oh, I think I just poured the compost on top of it. Oh, well. Um, so we basically want to go below a node. There's a node. Should we do a couple? Will that work? That'll work. And there's another node. I'm going to snip off the lower leaves, cut down the top leaves. So that's what I'm left with. So there's a couple. And there's the mini one that was growing, side shoot that was growing, and we'll give that one a go too. So just a small pot for that one as well. Um, still very gritty compost, but it's not quite as gritty as the succulent. There we go. And again, just basically, I'm going to push those in. You can do it a bit more around the edge in the way that you do cuttings. And the little one. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm going to cover that with grit. I will give that one a little water in, and um, I'm, I'm going to put some uh, plastic, a little plastic bag over the top of that, an elastic band it, and then these are both going into the house. But yeah, quick, easy little job there, and hopefully I'll have four more plants because of it. Right, next on the agenda for today then is part two of our compost trial, our peat-free compost trial. So we've been trialing two different composts, um, the Silver Grow, which has, you know, a pretty fair reputation with growers for a peat-free compost. And then the new kid on the block, Plant Grow. It's not that new, but it is new that you can sort of buy it in bags in the garden center. So this is the Plant Grow so far with the onion seedlings. We checked in on these last week. Um, and that's the Silver Grow and you can see there is a clear winner at the moment. So Plant Grow is outstripping the Silver Grow, which was quite a surprise to many of us, including myself. Now I want to continue the experiment on, but there are too many onion seedlings in each of these cells to continue and um, for multi-sowing, because there's about 15 seedlings, I think, in each of these 
cells. I was a bit heavy handed with my pinching. Um, so I'm going to separate these out into individual cells, but I want to keep the experiment going. So we need two trays, one full of silver grow, one full of plant grow, and then I'm going to transplant these onions into them and we'll check in with them again and see if the plant grow are still outperforming the silver grow. Now, I think it's going to be easier to do this if my onions get a little haircut. So I got my scissors, didn't I? Um, I'm going to snip off about half, half the size, and um, they should be fine. They shouldn't mind that, and it will just make them a little bit, you don't have to do it, but it will, for the purposes of what I'm doing today, it will make them a little bit more manageable. Um, I shan't do it with the um, seedlings on this side, which are actually um, scallions, spring onions, not onion onions. The onion variety, by the way, is uh, red barren. That's the, that's the onion we're testing with. And the um, spring onion variety that we're testing is Ishikora, okay? Right, so that's the next job for today. So I've done a uh, tray that is half plant grow compost and half silver grow compost. And I've started pricking them out in clumps of about five seedlings to plant in um, each of the cells. So for instance, one, so there's about five just there. I'm just carefully lifting from the bottom. There you go, see the, seed, the roots and then making a hole tucking all the roots down into it and then just firming around the little clump. Now with these ones, so I've got two from that, oh there's one as well, so I've got three there, we need another two from this cell. Okay, so again trying to keep it as, ooh, as few variables as possible to make it a very scientific <laughs> experiment. And this is good because, um, because I wasn't did the pinching, I wasn't quite sure how many I'd put in the plant grow and the silver grow. So although the plant grow does look like it had better germination, it's a bit hard to be absolutely sure because um, I could have been more heavy handed with the plant grow when I was doing the pinching. Whereas now each will have its own five seedlings. So it's a little bit more even. Right, that's all the silver grow onions. I've just got the spring onions left in there. And now I'll do the same with the plant grow. I mentioned when I was first sowing these that um, I did attempt to grow onions from seed last year, but without very much success. In fact, they're still in the beds <laughs> as tiny, tiny little onions. I'm kind of treating them as onion sets now, but I don't know if that will actually work. I think they would probably just rot in the ground now. But I'm hoping to have a lot more success this year and um, starting them much earlier than I did last year as well. And uh, so far, things seem promising. These are such lovely little seedlings. Grow, my babies, grow. I do feel like the um, roots are longer on the plant grow as well. <laughs> They're a bit trickier to tuck right into the hole. Yeah, mum. Well, that's ended up being super interesting. Um, this is the plant grow side, completely full. Everyone has got about five seedlings in. This is the silver grow side, only got um, two uh, in fact, it didn't even fit two rows. These last two, one here and one up here, 
are actually from the plank row because I couldn't fit them all in this side. So there you go, Silver Girl. You've got an extra two to try and do your magic on. Um, let's see how you do. But yeah, you can. And, you know, the variable in the pinching, I take on board that that could be a variable, but not to that extent. I did not pinch double the amount of uh, seed into the blank grow side than I did the silver. So I'm saying categorically, plant grow had better germination with the onion seeds. Um, I'm just going to water these in uh, very gently and just to settle the roots. And they are then staying in the greenhouse to continue growing on. Right, I need my list really, because what did we have left? Oh, we had the um, melon seeds to plant. I think we're going to do those in the morning. Okay, and we had, ah, I was thinking about improving the soil on the bed. And I think we've just got enough light left um, to have a go at this. Uh, now, I've mentioned this little trick before. Those of you who are regular viewers will know that I'm a sourdough baker. And at some point, because you've, you've asked for it, um, we're going to do a um, sourdough tutorial as part of one of the vlogs. Um, not today. Um, but if you make sourdough, what you can end up with is quite a lot of sourdough excess that you end up throwing away. Uh, often I don't throw it away. I use it to make wraps or waffles and, and that waffle, sourdough waffle recipe is in the vlog somewhere. Um, but sometimes it ends up in the compost heap. Now all it is is flour and water. OK, and you may have sometimes uh, heard if you've got flour that's like gone off or it's got weevils in or something, you can um, just uh, shake the flour over your beds. And there is goodness in that flour that will feed the soil and the soil life. Now, I cannot see any reason why sourdough starter wouldn't do the same thing with the added benefit that it's fermented and it's creating um, lab um, lactic acid. It's got a longer name, I'll put it on the screen. So diluting that with a bit of rainwater and then um, watering it over the raised beds, I think should be really good for the soil. And I am trying to improve the soil in the raised beds in the home garden because I just don't think they're as productive as they, as they should be. And the other thing I want to do once um, I've done that is put on some bags of soil conditioner as a mulch on top. And I have bought about 12 bags. <laughs> Of this blooming marvelous soil conditioner um, which is all destined for the home garden so um, while we've got a little bit of light left let's let's go and do that <laughs> Right, dog is walked and time for final job of the day, which is to plant the ranunculus. So they've been soaking for four hours, the water has been changed every hour, and then now they are plump little things. It's quite dark in here. But some of the um, corms or whatever they're called were all sort of stuck together. But now I think should be able to, yeah, gently prise them apart. So there are a lot more than I thought there were. Um, I prepared one tray of compost, with, which is one of these ones that have got the big, bigger cells. Um, so they're the equivalent of a sort of nine centimeter pot. And I thought I might put one or two in each of them, depending on the size of the corn. I mean, that's quite a big one. Yeah, there's only really one going to fit in there. Or I might need to do another tray of compost. A reminder that you plant with the uh, claws facing downwards. Imagine it's like a tiny dahlia if you 
or app to forget. Yeah, and I'm just, uh, I mean, the ones like that, they're sort of, you can see three stalks there. I mean, that's three together. Oh, actually, I didn't think they were going to pull apart, but they are now. Oh. So I'm guessing it's best to sort of divide them if you can. That one's quite stuck together, so I'm going to plant that as one. Anyway, I want to get on with this and um, do it pretty sharpish because I am ready for day done. <laughs> I am really ready for day done. I'm ready for a glass of wine and gladiators. So, um, so I'm going to crack on with this and, um, and then I'm going to catch you tomorrow when we'll be doing the rest of our sowings with our soaked seeds. Good morning, happy Sunday. It was a misty morning this morning. Um, sun did briefly come out. I thought, quick, film something, but of course <laughs> it was gone almost immediately. And it looks like we're set for another rather wet and dull day. Uh, nevertheless, I've been already out in the garden because I needed to prepare some trays ready to sow all of these seeds that have been soaking overnight. Um, it was a good call uh, to put them underneath the heat mat because the water was nice and lukewarm when I tested it this morning and everything looks nice and plump. So that's good. And um, yes, so I went out into the garden this morning and I made a mix of peat-free compost. Uh, it was actually a combination of the plant grow and silver grow and some perlite and then filled a load of trays. And these are those um, kind of flimsy cell trays. There's some that I just picked up in the recycled pot at the garden center. Um, so they're each put into a, a sturdier tray underneath a, a gravel tray. And then um, I have filled them, but I didn't sieve them. And that's because life is too short. So I just rubbed the compost between my hands to remove any um, large twigs or bits. Now they are ready to be sewn into. Oh, the other thing I did, because the compost had been out in the greenhouse overnight, um, it was a little chill. Uh, it was a mild night, so it wasn't like it was frozen or anything, but it was a little chill. So I boiled the kettle and just put a little bit of uh, boiled water into the compost mix and mixed it through. Just slightly raised the temperature of the compost and also means now it's pre-watered, it's nice and damp. So I can just sew straight into it. Now, the other good thing about soaking your seeds is that you get to see um, some that are completely unviable. So this isn't quite as foolproof as doing the kitchen uh, roll method, because then you can see if a seed will actually sprout. Um, but at least with soaking overnight, you do see if any are floating on the surface, it means they probably aren't viable seeds. So you can kind of wick those out and not bother sowing those and wasting a cell. Right, I'm going to do the peas last, I think, because we've got the most of those and they might end up, we might not end up having enough uh, trays. And maybe we'll put some in the, in the uh, greenhouse bed. They could go in there. Uh, let's start with the loofah because they're the most exciting. Um, these are all on the bottom, so it's presumably all viable seed. And I'm just going to place them into the compost. Um, I don't think it really matters which way up they are. But I am, um, as with cucumber and courgette seeds, I am planting them uh, vertically. Is that right? Horizontally? No, oh, that would be horizontal. Vertically. <laughs> so, and that's so they're not flat on the compost because they've got more chance of rotting. And as with all kind of seed, your general rule for depth is about twice the size of the seed itself. 
so it really they, they, I mean they're bigger seeds than obviously any of these but they're not huge so we're just going below the surface okay so that's the loofah done uh, which one shall we do next let's put the lupins in with the loofahs all the seeds on the lupin look so different really weird so how many have we got there I reckon we can do at least two or three per cell for these some are, yeah, some are really big and then some are tiny, tiny. Odd. Odd. All right, so I just make a little indent in each. Drop a couple in each. Let's do one of the big ones in each. And then we can put a little one in with it. Okay, so that's my, my first tray done. And um, what I might do actually is when I've done all of these is just take them outside and sieve some compost uh, over the top because the, they, um, the compost in the cells have sunk a little as I've been sewing. Um, but yeah, one down, <laughs> all of these to go. But I won't do all of these with you. But what I do want to do with you is the melon because this obviously hasn't been... Um, Sorry, my, my neighbour is just looking in, obviously wondering what I'm doing, sitting in the window talking to myself. Um, so the, the melon seeds haven't been soaked. And um, what I have just done is um, warmed these little pots on the warming mat, on the hot mat, um, to bring up the temperature of the compost. Melon is warmth loving. And um, oh, they're definitely these are definitely going into the, the propagator once they've sown whereas everything else i think uh is either just going on the windowsill like the sweet peas to germinate and then they will go out um or it will go straight out into the greenhouse into to a cold unheated greenhouse okay so i've got um five pots four for me and i'm doing an extra for my niece so it's her birthday uh this week we're having a, that's what I've got to go to this afternoon and which why I'm a little pressed for time. Um, so we're having a little tea party for her. Happy birthday to her. She's going to be 11. And um, I'm going to give her a watermelon uh, for her birthday, a sugar baby watermelon. Apparently she very much likes watermelon. Um, she will be, you know, disappointed by this, as was her brother when I gave him a tomato plant last year. But they like the banknote that's wrapped around the pot, so that's okay. And um, if she's not interested in growing on the melon, I'm sure her mom will be. Um, so I'm going to plant just one seed in each pot and uh, hope for the best, really. And as I say, these need to keep warm. Luckily, my cousin has bought a propagator, so she can keep she can keep this warm. And although I'm sewing myself four of these, I really think I only have space for one, two at a stretch, two if I get the greenhouse up on the allotment. Come on, can you get? Um, but I thought my mum might like to grow one in her conservatory, and then we've got a spare if, uh, if any go wrong, <laughs> which I'm sure some will. Okay, so buried them all. Uh, I'm going to give those a little bit of a water, actually, because that felt a bit dry. Um, and then, yeah, they're going to uh, maybe on the heat mat first, then into the propagator once they've germinated. But, yeah, keeping them warm. What does it say here? Um, sow seeds, da, da, da. Uh, and it does say in individual nine centimeter pots, which is what I've done. Uh, under glass at constant day and night temperature of 21. So actually that the heat mat's a bit um, high for that then. So I think they'll go straight into my slightly less hot propagator. Okay. When they are about four inch tall, plant into final positions. They do grow quickly, I believe. So they might be four inch tall before they've got a final position to go in, in which case they'll be getting potted on and staying on the windowsill. But we shall see. It's the first year uh, I've grown a melon. So it's very much an experiment for me. If you've got advice, pop it in the comments. Right, I shall crack on with these then and I shall meet you down the plot in about an hour. See you then.
exciting visit to the uh, allotment today, um, but I've got a few jobs done. So I've netted over the brassicas finally. So perhaps that'll keep the pigeons off to get a few more leaves before they all bolt. Um, cut down the autumn fruiting raspberries and nice to see that they are coming up. Um, so that's good. Uh, checked on my new Romanesco after we harvested the other one um, and that's growing fairly well. What else did we do, Dory? Uh, just tidied up a bit, really. Um, yeah, I think that was it. But I now have to go straight to a children's birthday party. Luckily, I've brought a change of clothes <laughs> to wash my hands. <laughs> and um, I will catch you a bit later because um, I ran out of room for peas. So we are going to have to find some guttering to do the rest of the peas. Okay, catch you later.